Draft Talk of Champions Short Sessions. I'm your host, Zach Barry. We are here once again this week talking college football. Look, I know it's the offseason, but there, look, there is no offseason. It's always going. The conversation is always moving. We're going to get to that here in a moment with our guest. Before we do that, I want to remind you of the sponsor that powers this show, and that is College Corner. If you don't know, by now they got one in Oxford now, along with the locations in Flowood and Ridgeland. If you cannot go in person, have no fear, collegecornerstore.com. They got peach bowl gear, they got polos, they got real tree, everything you can possibly want and more Ole Miss related. They've got tailgating supplies if you want to beat the rush for baseball season that comes up in a couple weeks, or if you just want to go ahead and beat the rush for the fall, as uh, we'll get into it here in a moment, probably the most anticipated season ever in the history of Ole Miss football. So without further ado, let's bring in our guest. That is Mr. Michael Felder, man of many talents. Check out his Substack. It's felder.substack.com. You can also hear him, see him, Bleacher Report, Learfield. Michael, good afternoon. How are we doing? I'm doing well, man. Like Zach, I'm, I'm I feel like I'm killing it. Um, I don't know if my wife or my daughter would say the same thing, but you know, I feel like I'm killing it. Absolutely. Um, look, normally February seventh, we would be talking National Signing Day. We 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 don't have to get in it too much, but yeah, not nearly the holiday that it was, you know, ten years ago, right? I mean, it's there's yeah. barely anything going on. But um, let's let's briefly touch on the portal. We don't have to talk about specific players. We probably will, but just in your eyes, how it's evolving and it's changing the game. I know Kiffin was kind of at the forefront of leading the way for, you know, quote, free agency in college football. But over the last couple months in the last year or so, how has it changed how you view college football and how you cover it? It's it's gotten a lot harder. And I listen, don't cry for me, Argentina. I can live with it. Like, it's fine. <laughs> Um, the, the crazy thing, and let's, let's put it in, let's, you know what, your listeners are all Miss fans. Let's put it in perspective. They are the number 17 recruiting class overall this year, but according to the kind of the, or excuse me, 21 to the composite, but -hmm. also the number one in transfers. Yeah. So they have guys that are going to walk in. They have grown men. They're going to walk into that building and go play football. Yeah. And this is after losing a guy who I thought, I think he's probably the best transfer in Junkins. Mm -hmm. But they still are number one overall. So I think that matters. And I think it's, it's made things change. I think Lane Kiffin, Deion Sanders, to me, those are the top two. And I guess if we're going to talk about it, let's, I'd rather do it off the top, Zach, if we're going to do it, because we also had two major shifts that led to other shifts in college football we had Nick. We had Nick Saban retire. Yeah, we had Jim Harbaugh uh, move to the NFL. So those guys, and the, but let's not forget, they both played in national. They played each other in a national semifinal game. Yeah. So they they signed kids in December that signed up to play for them, and then those kids are like, who? Can you imagine? And you're you're down you're down there you're in the south. You, listen, you cover Ole Miss. Like, can you imagine? You wake up in the morning and Nick Saban is gone, the guy you committed to play for, and then you're like, "Who is Kalen DeBoer? Who is, <laughs> I I keep putting the S on his name because I'm like, who is Kalen DeBoer? Who is Kalen DeBoer? Yeah. Who is this guy? I don't I don't know. In the words of Mariah Carey, I don't know him. <laughs> So yeah, like, I, it's a different world. And then you well, signed up to play for Washington, and now all of a sudden, you, who is Jed Fish? Yeah. Well, especially in the South, unless you're a true no. sicko or a big-time yeah. college football fan. Right. I mean, you probably knew who Kalen DeBoer was once the playoff rolled around. But during sure. the year, people don't know who he is. No clue. I mean, not especially teenagers, man. When I yeah. talk to them, very mm-hmm. rarely, Michael, do I talk to a kid – that will sit down and watch college football on Saturday. They don't. I know. I listen, I played football with guys like that. Like I watched yeah. I watched college football because of my dad. And yeah. then I got to college and was playing football and I played with a bunch of guys that just did they have no idea. They know yeah. some they know some NFL guys. Yeah. Like they know Ed Reed. Like when I, I and I'm talking 03 to 07 is when I played. 
they know Ed Reed, they know Ray Lewis, they know this. And yeah. the Florida guys know each other because they're all from Florida. But yeah, I play with a guy that he was like, I don't what? I don't watch football. Are you kidding me? I'm just good at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, which is um, fine. Yeah, yeah. I I it's it's weird to hear that because I've grown up watching it my whole life. Um, and then now it's what I do for, for a living. But yeah, and we can kind of shift here with you, sure. you brought up Saban retiring and DeBoer coming in. Look, I thought DeBoer was a fantastic hire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude's a winner. I've said that on numerous shows. Don't worry about where the guy's from or what. Yeah. If he can win, sign him up. Yep. That's 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 what you do. Well, um, I, yeah. I, Let I me... think Drinkwitz is a great example. Yeah. I know there's some, some groveling about him when he when he got to Missouri. And I told my friends that were Mizzou grads, I was like, he wins, man. He, he's going to figure it out. And now look at him. So the thing for me, there's two things I really like about it. I love that they have completely divorced themselves from Nick Saban. And not in a bad yeah. way. He's always going to be welcome there. He's always going to be. Yeah. Well, he apparently will still have an office in the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> like, but but what, they, what they didn't do was what Tennessee did, what, twice? Florida did it twice. What um, A&M did, which, by the way, A&M's got a new coach, too, now. Yep. They didn't chase that dragon. They didn't chase like the, some derivative of Nick Saban. Yeah. What they did was decide we're going to do something different. It's going to be a different culture. It's going to be a different man. And obviously, and we're watching that in the portal right now. And I got to do a show in, what are we looking at? An hour? I got to do a show and we're, and I got to explain to people that DeBoer is not Nick Saban, but he's also not trying to be Nick Saban. Right, but yeah. when you but when you get Derek Dooley, Will Muschamp, um, Jimbo Fisher, uh, Jimbo Will Muschamp did it twice, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they're like, no, this is a new thing. We're new. Yeah. It's different. So I really like that, and <clears throat> obviously, and I think Lane Kiffin is something different, which is why I'm excited about what's going to be what the future looks like, because Lane Kiffin was like. I got to rehab my career, sure, but then I'm still going to be me. And we saw that on the sidelines in Alabama where he was, him and Nick Saban are arguing. Like, yo, dog, no, I know what I'm talking about. Like, you don't get to yeah. tell me this. And so <laughs> that's different than, like, trying to hire a copycat. And that's been the part that's been the most interesting to me. But it's also hard because at Alabama, we're seeing those transfers. And they're going everywhere. Ohio State, Florida, they're going to Georgia. Like, it's it's everywhere. And so that's the part that's going to be really interesting to see is how they handle that. It got Ole Miss, like, they're going everywhere. Yeah. You mentioned being your own man, and I think that's big, been big for Kiffin where yeah. Ole Miss has given him the full autonomy. You can, you know, ask for it. You know, if it's reasonable, we'll give it to you. Yep. Um, and, you know, with the portal, he kind of started that a couple of years ago when they were able to land Jackson Dart, Zach Evans, yep. and a bunch of those guys. Now you fast forward year three of Dart, um, and there's a lot of hype about Ole Miss in the preseason, which I think is warranted. I think Ole sure. Miss has earned it after 11 wins and beating Penn State the way it did. But in your eyes, you cover everybody. You're a national guy, so you're not – you know, narrowly focused on one program like we are, but what's your, you know, expectations for Ole Miss in 2024 with Kiffin now in, in year five? I think it's, it's weird because if we go into it, we still expect Georgia to be like at the top, top. Yeah. And then you got scr a scramble drill in those, those next three spots mm -hmm. and those next three, those next three spots I don't trust what I have at Florida. No. Don't trust what I see at Tennessee. Yeah, which not yet. all all this stuff percolates Ole Miss higher and higher. That's the way that yeah. I look at it. Like that's and I know it's not the way that everybody else looks at football, but that's the way that I look at it is like, how does this work? LSU, they gotta find a quarterback. What's mm -hmm. gonna happen? And the defense too. Oh, that defense was absolutely booty. <laughs> um 
I don't, I don't have a problem saying that. They were bad. Yeah. Um, and then we got to look at AM, new coaching staff, Mike Elko. They're also in the portal. What are we going to do with that? Alabama, new coaching staff, and a new coaching staff that I don't like somebody's, I mean, maybe it's Milrow. I don't know who it is. Somebody's going to have to galvanize the rest of that roster because they already got guys that are just gone. Yeah. So why not us? Why not now? And I think that's the thing. I think about that a lot with football, with all with Ole Miss, with um, I think about it with UNC. I, that's where I play. I play at UNC. Mm-hmm. Why not us? Why not now? And if you can't do it now, when are we going to do it? Yeah. And that's the thing I think about. Like, you should be in Atlanta this year. You should yeah. be in Atlanta this year. Um, Auburn is a problem. What they're doing in the portal is also like I wouldn't I, I think it's it's not comparable, but it is a problem. Yeah. Like what they're able to do is has been interesting. Their but quarterback situation is intriguing. That's that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, gotta figure it out. <laughs> Like they, they're you're missing a huge piece. Yeah. Like it's like it's like if you when you go and buy like a chain and you like don't have like the diamond encrusted piece that goes at the middle, <laughs> and you're like, but the chain is so nice. Yeah. And you're like yeah, but what about this part? So, I just really think that I think old men like this make a run for it, go for it. I'd I'd, I'd burn my tires out, and that's the part that's going to be really interesting. I mean. I mean, can we? You want to let, let's go to the list, man. We got the Amos kid from Alabama. You got a couple kids from Washington. You get some kids from Tennessee. Like we're looking at guys that can play, and I know they can play. You throw in Logan Diggs. Logan Diggs is an interesting piece to me. Yeah, because this is the guy. Um, like he's plug him in. Like you, he's gonna have to play immediately anyway. And I think you're buying back time and you correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like they're buying time for these young guys. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah. Cause I, the last couple of years, it seemed that the theme has Ole Miss has adopted experience and, you know, older guys. So not just young guys yeah. that have played a lot, but they want to get dudes who have been around. So yeah. You look at if we go down the you mentioned Diggs. Yeah. Played at Notre Dame, played at LSU. Mm-hmm. He's got to get the knee right, but they expect him to be ready once conference play hits. But mm-hmm. Walter Nolan, multi year guy at AM. Key Lawrence, yeah. multi year guy at Oklahoma. Brandon Turnage, multi year yep. at Bama and Tennessee. I mean, you go down the list. Prince of Umami Ellen, the number one edge in the portal. Dude, he the, he'd been around the block. Yeah. You get the two guys from Washington that played a ton of football on the Joe Moore award-winning offensive line. Yep. Um, I mean, it's pretty much the theme all the way through outside of Amorian Walker, who was per Jim Harbaugh. When I talked to the Michigan guys at the on three site, they said Harbaugh loved him and he got hurt. Um, but they were really pushing him to make the switch from wide receiver to corner. So that's, you know, the one lone young guy, everybody else, ton of football under their belt so yeah yeah it's a good way to they're buying time yeah to bridge that gap between a a green freshman being thrown in the fire where hey you're not going to be thrust in there immediately because we got this dude that's playing his fourth or fifth year of college yeah you're you buy time and this is something basically for me at least i think about this a lot with like wisconsin with iowa Mm -hmm. They bring kids in, and those kids they don't play at all. They just hang, they they work and work and work and work, and then when they're a redshirt sophomore, you're basically you're getting redshirt sophomores, redshirt yeah. redshirt juniors, and I think that's a like it's a re what is it a rebalance of, of sorts with college football, yeah. Where I don't. I don't think most coaches are built to do this. Yeah. I think most coaches are built to tell a promise. That, and the problem is they're built to promise a kid something. And then once the kid gets there and doesn't get it, that kid leaves. 
Right. But in the process of that, the next guy that gets them is also getting a guy who is actually, they do have some miles on those tires and they're ready to rock and roll. And I Mm. think that's what we're seeing. And that's been a very, I don't know how to, I still don't know. I'll be honest. I still don't know. Zach, I still don't know how to talk about that because the kids aren't, the kids aren't running away. The kids aren't running away from, from, from pressure. They're not running away from, hard work they just got promised the thing and then they were like i didn't get that thing i am gonna go i'm gonna i'll do it somewhere else and i think that's the biggest part of it does that like i hope that makes sense yeah it's interesting because well i think about coaches having to shift most of them their entire career yeah you know, recruiting was different. Building a roster was different. Now it's more of roster retention and, you know, building a roster to win now, which is what. Yes. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people speculated, well, Kiffin's doing that just so he can win now and get out. I think he's just trying to win now with the best roster he can put on the field every year. Um, He's, he's never shied away from, you know, why, why'd you get so many quarterbacks in the portal last year? You know, Spencer Sanders and, you know, he was just like, I, I just want to get the most talent I can, put them in a room, and everybody compete, and then we'll put the best guy out there. Yes. It's not it's, a terrible strategy. It's a good strategy. I mean, that's just what everybody else has been doing for years. With we just recruiting. used to, yes, we just used to do it in recruiting. Yeah. Like, USC, when they had all those quarterbacks, you're like, why do you need all these guys? And you're like, well, hey, man, we need all of them because yeah. – Somebody might get hurt or yep. one guy might not work out and we need to figure it out. And that was, yeah. now we're just seeing it through the portal. And what we're seeing is I just don't, I don't like guys getting lied to. And that's the part where the portal to me helps because you can lie to me all you want, but I can leave. And that's yeah. the part that's been very interesting to see how it, how it shakes itself out. Are you looking at cutting your health insurance premiums by as much as 20 to 30%? Are you aging into Medicare and need help finding a Medicare supplement plan? Call Drew Moak of USA Benefits Group at 601-953-8449. Drew is an Ole Miss grad located in Mississippi and licensed in seven states. He works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage with access to 35 different carriers, and he can help you with any of your health insurance needs. From regular health plans to life insurance to dental and vision and even Medicare, he has it all covered. Now more than ever, it is critical to have a health insurance agent who is local and accessible. So call Drew Moak at 601 953-8449 and get your free quote today. The car buying process can be a lot. I know, I've been there. You just want to get in and out with a new car and the best deal. Simple. Alan Samuels Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Oxford keeps it simple. They're going to take care of you, get you in and out with your new vehicle with a great deal. Their inventory right now is priced to sell, and what separates Alan Samuels Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Oxford from any and all competitors is they aim to address each of your needs with the utmost respect, care, and attention to detail. Contact them today at 662-234-8000. That's 662-234-8000. Stop by and see them in person at 2201 East University Avenue in Oxford. That's Alan Samuels Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Oxford to find your next perfect car, truck, or Jeep. Alan Samuels. Let's be friends. And then if you lie with NIL and the portal and collectives, yep. word gets around if you lie or if you yep. don't keep your promises. Um, so that's a big thing now too, where you got to be yep. on the same page with your collective. Um, I think Ole Miss has done a good job of that. There's been some other mm-hmm. collectives around the country that have done a nice job, but there are some out there that haven't kept promises. Yep. Have it have it paid in full. I mean, um, we what who's the kid, the Miami kid that went to what, Arizona State? Oh, Jaden Rashada. Yeah. 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 The whole thing with Florida and yeah, bolted and went out somewhere where they would pay him. So um yeah, I, I think I, I kind of have this mindset of I don't really complain about it because 
Sure. It doesn't matter what I think. I still have to cover it. Um, but I kind of like it because I, I think it's good for coaches to have to you know, kind of see. Yeah. Yeah. You have to work. Like you, you, you got to work nonstop. I mean, you see announcements from collectives of re-signing guys that are on the team and people are asking me, well, was that guy trying to leave or no, yeah. he's just re-upping his deal. Like that's yep. college football in 2024 now. Yeah. I, I just, I'm never going to feel bad. Like I'm never going to feel bad for Dabo Swinney or Nick, <laughs> not now Nick Saban or Link, I'm even Lane Kiffin. Like I'm not going to feel bad for them. When a kid is like, I didn't feel comfortable there. I didn't like it. I, I, I have to go. Like, I'm not going to feel bad for them. You have to work harder. Yeah. Guess what? The, that's what the money's for. Like, what, what is he? What does Don Draper say? That's what the money's for. Yeah. Like, it's like, yo, that's what the money's for. Like, the money is so yeah. that you do the job to make sure that we keep this guy here so that we can keep playing. And we can yeah. keep winning and we can go play for an SEC championship or a Big Ten championship or a national championship. That's what the money's for. Yeah. And so that's the big thing for me. Um, but no, I just I'm excited for you guys. Are you kidding me, dude? I'm right, so I don't know if you have the schedule pulled up, but we don't I have pull to go up the, right now. We don't Let's have to do we don't have to go through the whole thing, but to me, this season for Ole Miss, the two games that are the toughest, in my opinion, are at home, Georgia and Oklahoma. Yeah. I think you split Oklahoma's those. Oklahoma's interesting, man. Yeah, because they got the uber-talented uh, quarterback coming in that played in the bowl game. Uh, Jackson Arnold I mean, just mm -hmm. oozes talent, but what's he going to look like as the guy? Yep. Um, you know what Georgia's going to be. It, it's at, it, it, for Ole Miss, it's at home, but you're, you're going to be, you're going to be an underdog in that game. Probably not winning. If you split those two and then find a way to 10 and two, I mean, oh. you're looking at, you're in the playoff. 10 and, and two. And you mentioned the LSU Ooh. issues at quarterback. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in Baton Rouge, but on paper, Ole Miss is the better team. Yeah. You've got the more complete team. I mean, I think this is arguably the best team Kiffin has had going into a season. You got a third year guy at quarterback. Yeah. You've got a third year wide out in Jordan Watkins who has mm -hmm. turned himself into a dude. You get Trey Harris back. You get a ton on defense back. And then you get everybody in the portal. I mean, I just, I, the Judkins, I just am so, Judk, I'm just so, that one hurt, man. Yeah. And I mean, that again, like that's the money. I mean, yeah. one yeah. more money and Ole Miss just, Hey, we're going to allocate resources elsewhere. If you're not happy, and they did fine. a good job. They did a good job of that. So yeah, no, we're looking at that. I, hang on, I don't mean to de, I don't mean to deviate. What do we think is happening at Arkansas? Man, um, I, I'm of the opinion if you don't think that he's the guy that can get it done, you make a move. So I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't yeah. like the. Well, we'll extend you one more year to see if you can figure, yeah. you know, try to get a coordinator like the Petrino thing. Yeah. You know, at, at this point, and, you know, everybody's like, well, Petrino's probably just going to get the job if they fire Sam Pitt. Well, just Again? hire Petrino. Yeah. Like just fire Pittman and hire him now. I, that yeah. sort of thing. Cause then you're just, you're just putting yourself back a year again. Um, no, what's what's that team going to look like without KJ Jefferson? That's the big That's, thing because yeah, yeah. I that love dude him. single single handedly won them games, kept them in games. Yep. But they lose a ton on deep. I mean, their their best linebackers at Ole Miss now mm -hmm. in in Pooh Paul, and you know you lose Jefferson, you lose a ton on defense. Yep. Um, Secondary is almost completely gone. Yeah, and new new scheme on offense. I I don't know. I. I I, I Sam, agree. LSU Sam Pittman fell off big time. Yeah. LSU. So what are we looking at? We're looking at LSU. We're looking at Oklahoma. Those are probably In Georgia. outside of Georgia. Those are the big ones. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be rough. I mean, Georgia to me, they, I think they really know who they are. Even losing Bowers, even losing Ladd McConkey, they know who they are. I think yeah. LSU 
LSU, the problem with the LSU game is, is it's in the middle of October. Yeah. What's and, the health look like at that point? And no, not health. It's going to take LSU a month to figure out who they are without Jaden Daniels. Yeah. But you're, this game is at the at the end of that month. Yeah. This game's in, they've, they've already played September. They know who they are now. And I do say this, Brian Kelly is a very good football coach. And I don't think folks give him enough credit for it. So that's going to be interesting. Um, Oklahoma. I still don't know what Oklahoma is going to look like in the SEC. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't, I have no clue. Like when I, when I, when I look at Oklahoma's schedule and go through it, it's like, man, what are they going to do? Like, what are they going to do? Two new don't... coordinators. Yeah. New quarterback. I mean, a lot of question marks. That that's that's kind of my thing with Ole Miss. Yeah. Is Ole Miss doesn't have many question marks. Right. And, and that's what you that's what you want. Right. A lot of and known commodities. You want to no yeah, you that you said it in a way more intelligent way than I would say it. <laughs> because I would just I would say I just want to find I need answers. I want answers. That's all I want is answers. Yeah. And Oklahoma, even with the Dylan Gabriel like transfer, they feel good about Jackson Arnold. Let's rock mm-hmm. and roll. We're gonna do it. Yeah. And Venables, I, mean, I Venables to me is someone who I like the way that he coaches. He, if I had to put my top five favorite coach now that Saban's retired, if I had to put my top five favorite coaches out there. Venables is 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 it, like it, no order, no order, no order. I'm just saying my five guys that I always am looking for, guys that I always want to watch. Venables is one of them because he he takes guys out of the game. He'll pull you. He'll put you on the bench. He don't mm-hmm. care. Yeah. Lane Lane is on that list for me as well because I love that Lane. Lane is like the Loki of coaching. <laughs> like, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Like, I just, I remember watching him when he was at USC and watching him play Hawaii, knowing that he had big games coming up. And he'll just be like, hey, man, we're going to do this play. I'll never run again. But guess what? You're going to have to practice against it. Yeah. It's like, you're wasting your time. I know I'm never running this play again. But guess what? You need yeah. to. So I love that about him. It's on film, right? It's on tape. And so him, Venables, because of the discipline, Lane, because like that would, do you know how nuts that drives a defensive coordinator, what Lane Kiffin does? It makes you feel like a psycho. Because you have to chart it and you have to put it in the game plan. Yeah. Um, Kirby Smart, and Kirby is specifically because I mean, I can't put Nick Saban in there because he's not coaching anymore, but he's the only one that fits the bill. He's the only one. Um, and then I, I would, if I had to pick, I got to pick two more guys. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Those are my three. Malzahn is a psycho. I love him. Like, he is. Yeah. His ability to like move pieces around mm-hmm. and make people do stuff. And then I'll probably go James Franklin. Okay. Because Franklin, Franklin makes you think so much and then he does nothing. Motions, formations. And he's, Franklin was better when, when Moorhead was with him at oh, Penn State. Man, yeah. But so maybe it's Moorhead is the answer, but Moorhead didn't get it all all the way get it all the way done at Mississippi State. But like Franklin, they did, makes him, you... they did him dirty, Michael, in my opinion. I uh, yeah, I, I, agree. I was a I was a huge Moorhead fan when yeah he was at Penn State. His story is pretty cool. Yeah, um, but that's those are my I I love those guys that like make you move around, make it hard like. Oh, Jeff Tedford too, which by the, which is why I like oh, yeah. Kalen DeBoer. I sat, I was at the opening, and I know I got the real, and I know we got to go, but I, I, 
I was at the opening. And it's the opening when Davis Mills was there. The Dylan McCaffrey, maybe. And I would listen to Jeff Tedford explain cover two. And so when you play defense, you get explained cover two and where the where it's all in front of you. Mm-hmm. And then Tedford explained it where you're behind everybody. And I was like, oh, this guy's a son of a bitch. Like, he's going <laughs> to, this guy's killing us. He's like, yeah. this guy has to be here, so you go here. And you. this guy has to be here, so you go here. And the linebacker can't run with you, so you go here. And I'm like, Jeff Tedford is like, this guy's a genius. And so DeBoer going to Alabama, that's what you're getting. Alabama mm-hmm. fans, that's what you're getting. Yeah. So last thing. Um, yes, sir. Quick thought on Kiff- – Kiffin had a quote. I don't have the direct quote in front of me, but I can kind sure. of give you the the gist. After Ole Miss gets destroyed by Georgia mm-hmm. in November, he pretty much said, hey, we, we got to recruit better. I got to coach better. We got to get better in the trenches. Um, yep. Big boy. I know he's, you said he's one of your favorites, but how honest do you think coaches are like that across the board? Like, do you think there are many that would just come out and say that in a I press do. conference after losing like that? I do. People aren't always going to like it, but at the end of the day, the reality of it is that he knows the same thing with Dion, right? Mm-hmm. Not big enough. And you got to get bigger. How do you get bigger? You can't get bigger. And we we hit on this earlier in the show, right? With Iowa and Wisconsin. It takes them three, four years to get those guys big enough to do it. I, I'll say this from, ex- I'm not going to say experience, but my wife's cousin played was a starting left tackle at Michigan State. When he got to school, he weighed 265 pounds. And he they just put him on the bench and just let him grow and grow and grow until he was 290. That's two years. It takes two years, two years to get to 290. Yeah. What's Lane? Lane is hitting the portal. I got to get yeah. some bigger guys. And so I think he is being honest about it. I also think that honesty, I don't know that if I always love it. Because we saw it with Dion as well. I just, yeah. I want to, I want to, I, I, I am, and obviously you, you're dedicated to high school recruiting, right? Mm-hmm. It's hard to watch these guys. Like today should have been a huge day for a lot of guys. Yeah. And they have to make business decisions. And we're also going to see other guys make decisions, but these like a 275 pound guy, he should be able to go to Ole Miss and in two years be a 310 pound guy. And that's the part that I, I, and I don't, I'm not trying to ruin anything. I just, I think that's the part that gives me pause about the portal. And it's not because of the portal. It's because the coaches are looking for the easiest way to get to the solution because the coaches are looking for the way to get the win. Yeah. And that's the part that's interesting to me. And that's how we handle it, how we deal with it, how we talk about it. I think that's what matters. But the reality to me is I see it as a means to an end. He can go out. If he can go out and sign all three guys that are 300 pounds on offensive line and then go out and find 270, like two 275 pound guys, plug them, play them. You're in business. Mm -hmm. It just is. Everyone does it differently. And I think that's, I think that's where we have to make this distinction where like, whether it's Colorado or it's Ole Miss versus Wisconsin and Iowa or Utah, Utah is another one of those schools. It's like, yeah, because Utah goes Juco but they get those JUCOs in and then they build those guys up. It's just a matter of like, what do we want to do? How are we going to do it? There's no right. There's no wrong way. There's no right way. You just got to find your own way. Yeah. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. Cause you know, going back to what we said earlier, it's, it's kind of the Kiffin is, you know, yeah. we're going to sign the best high school players we can every year, Yep. but we're also going to go to the portal where, Hey, just come and compete. That's all they ask you to yeah. do. And, 
if you're a high school guy and you think you can play, you want to play here, come and prove it. I think that's yep. that's kind of what he's going for. Yeah. Um, all right, before we get out of here, uh, again, appreciate you joining. Uh, tell the folks where they can hear you, see you, and, and read you. Folks, I'll be on – I'm actually going to be on Bleach Report here um, today. You can check that out on the Bleach Report app. Um, uh, it's felder.substack.com, and check that out on Learfield for College Sports Now. Boom. All right. And I'll throw this in there, too. Uh, listen to Hand in the Dirt if you don't already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wherever you get your podcasts. I got a, I got a good topic for you all can talk about on the next show. Uh, when did your kids start climbing out of the crib and how'd you handle it? She never did. Never. <laughs> okay. We got to we got to get you on that show, anyways. <laughs> my oldest never did, but my youngest is is doing it. So I had to convert a bed earlier before we started. So. Oh yeah, she she never climbed out of the crib. I have a friend who climbed into the crib and slept with his kid. Like that's what <laughs> they did every night. No. That's what I said. That's setting a precedent that you don't want to start. Yeah, I know, dude. So we got to get you on the show. Let me know what your next let's let's get through signing day and then let me know what your next week is like and we'll we'll get you on the show, okay? Cuz server right. server's like we got to talk to him. And I was like, "Yes, we do." <laughs> That's Michael Felder. Appreciate him joining. Appreciate College Corner powering the show. All the other sponsors that bring it to you and of course, we appreciate you the listener for tuning in. So for Michael over there, I'm Zach. It's been talking champion short sessions until next time we out.